Now, that is not all. And I was listening to Dr. Nasser very attentively and, and he illustrated the, the problems very clearly. Look at Ghana. Look at Ghana. Look at the map of Ghana. If you can't travel around Ghana, look at the map of Ghana. Look at the rivers which crisscross our country of Fing, uh, Oti, and name them. Volta. Even Volta, we are black and white. We have created the largest man made lake in the world. We are bordered on the south by the Atlantic Ocean, this huge Atlantic Ocean. And we import fish. Don't you feel sad? We import fish. Is this a problem for which we have to go to the IMF? Today, we are importing guinea fowls from Denmark. Is this a problem for which we have to go to the IMF? How does the IMF resolve this problem of depending on Denmark for the production of your protein? Somebody should tell me how the IMF is going to solve that problem. And it gets worse. It gets worse. Every day, it gets worse. Now, it's not like we've never gone to the IMF before. We've been there 19 times already. We're going to go there for the 20th time. And I recall in 1982-83 when we went and laid prostrate before the IMF of the World Bank and what happened to us. And I'm sure that many of you remember. Some of you may not want to face the facts because of its implications and so on. But I will try to face the facts and I don't care what anybody thinks. We went to the IMF and the World Bank in 1982 and they gave us then what they call the Economic Recovery Program. What was the Economic Recovery Program? They told us that we were giving too many Ghanaians employment and that we should sack them. Retrenchment of labor was imposed on us. I was speaking to some trade union leaders three days ago and they were telling me that if you take the cocoa sector alone, we had about 100,000 workers. 90,000 of the workers in the cocoa sector lost their jobs as a result of going to IMF and World Bank. Within one year, 300,000 workers lost their jobs under an IMF program. 300,000 workers lost their jobs. They told us to privatize state enterprises. And we started selling these enterprises like granules. We sold them by heart. State Fishing Corporation, we sold. Some of the subsidiaries of Gihon, we sold. Uh, Bonsa Thai Factory, we sold. The Glass Factory, we sold. Shoe Factory, we sold. And the excuse then was that if you sell these factories to the private, capital, they will be improved, they will do better. Let us go back to 1982 and see all those industries that we sold, which one of them is doing better? The only things we sold which are doing better are Moving Peak, Moving Peak Ambassador Hotel and Golden Tulip. Finish. Every other factory we sold has collapsed. Let us begin to put on our thinking caps. Because if we refuse to put on our thinking caps, we will get deeper and deeper into trouble and we will go to the IMF again and there will be no solutions for us but more punishment. Look, they told us that we needed to cut, needed to cut uh, 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 subsidies on, on social services, on housing, on education and so on. And we did. What was the consequence? If you remember, it resulted in the cash and carry system. Where if you had an accident and you went to the hospital and you didn't have money, they turned you away. It happened in this country. I'm told I have very little time so I cannot give the other examples. But it was a complete disaster. And our political leaders should wake up and think 
Because I recall very clearly, 2001, when President Kufu assumed office, I recall that this IMF and World Bank representatives in Ghana wrote a very long letter to him telling him that the economy had collapsed and that he needed to implement extraordinary measures in order to revive the economy. And I asked myself, well, wasn't it these same people who were saying that we were doing so well and that other African countries should copy us? Was the government not implementing the program that they drew up? So if the economy has collapsed, who collapsed the economy? Of course, at the time, our brothers and sisters in the NPP were so very happy. They had gotten information or some kind of endorsement that the NBC government didn't do well. And we were watching them. The same institutions came to them and gave them a package called Hebeg. You remember? And they implemented all the measures. January 2009, President Mills takes office. The same resident representatives so on, write another very long letter to President Mills and tell President Mills, Kufour has collapsed the economy. The same people who were telling us that Kufour was doing so very well, they now go to Mills and say, Kufour has collapsed the economy. And listen, our leaders still continue to listen to these people. And the thing which annoys me the most, and I hope that nobody is going to repeat that stupidity here today, that, oh, we are happy that they are going to the IMF. As for the IMF, they will discipline them. 30 million people with your sovereignty, with the power you have to impeach presidents in parliament and so on, you cannot discipline your leaders. And you are relying on IMF to come and discipline your leaders. That is a statement about us. It's an unfortunate statement about us. If our leaders are disciplined, it is our responsibility to discipline them and not the IMF. If our leaders are reckless, it is up to us to throw them out of power and not the IMF. Ghana became independent more than 60 years ago. And we should be guided by the principles which underpinned our struggle for national independence and stop this stupidity. We've had enough of this stupidity. Why? Small trouble in Ghana, and then we are rushing to the British to come and solve it for us. There are some of our politicians, they made the British High Commission their second home. Some of them, if the American embassy doesn't endorse something, it doesn't exist. Let's end this stupidity. The answer to Ghanaian problems is in Ghana and it's with Ghanaians, not with foreign missions in our country. The answer to Ghanaian problems is in the hands of Ghanaians and not the IMF and certainly not the World Bank. I've heard some people say that we are going to the IMF because the IMF is going to give us $2.5 billion so that we can straighten things up and so on. Now let us assume that there is $2.5 billion for us to go and collect. I don't believe that. Whatever will happen will be based on negotiations which have just started. You understand? The negotiations can break down. And if the negotiations break down, I ain't getting even one dollar. You understand? So don't let us create the false impression that there's some $2.5 billion sitting somewhere that we are going to take to revamp our economy. It doesn't work that way. We are going to negotiate the negotiations campaign. In any case, there are countries which have been negotiating with the IMF for five years. Five years of negotiations have resulted in nothing. So please don't raise your hope beyond the certain threshold, even if you believe in the IMF. These negotiations can carry on and carry on and carry on, even beyond the term of office of President Nana Adodankwa, His Excellency. It can go beyond that period. In any case, if you went to the IMF and they said, okay, we are giving you a loan of five billion to go and tie yourself up. What is that money meant for? 
The IMF's principal responsibility is to keep the sanity of Western financial institutions, to make sure that Western financial institutions do not run aground. So sometimes they tell us about something they call policy credibility. When they talk about policy credibility, what do they mean? They simply mean that when the IMF comes and says, oh, we have had an agreement to you, we are going to be good boys and so on, the financial institutions of the West can continue to lend in to you. That's all. Nothing more. If there's anything more, tell me. There's nothing more. You understand? Now, where we are, part of the problem is that we are borrowing without thinking. We are borrowing without sense. So if you are going to make a policy capability to make borrow more, what problem are you solving? What problem are you solving? The worst part of it is when they try to give us reasons why we are here. And they tell us that COVID, COVID-19 is one of the reasons why we are here. And they tell us that Russia-Ukrainian war is another reason why we are here. What nonsense. The finance minister went to parliament. Honorable Adongo was there if I lie, you tell me that I lie. The finance minister went to parliament and he says, no, when we got COVID, we got relief. We got relief of 19 billion. And that out of 19 billion, COVID-related expenses was 12 billion. Allah, what does that mean? It means you made profit out of COVID. <laughs> and then he's asked, what did you do with the 7 billion that you didn't spend? He said, we put it in other... So if you made profit out of COVID, how does COVID then become your headache? How does COVID then become your problem?